Thanks to MPB for sponsoring today's video. Yo, what's up? It's your favorite temporarily 100 photography nerd on YouTube here to ask the very important question. Why is everything a subscription service? Everything wants to pull money out of your pocket every month. It's not just streaming. It's all the software we need to do our jobs and every single little tool in between. What do you mean I have to pay a monthly fee for my doorbell to work? Do you have any idea how much money I pay for subscriptions every month? No, I'm asking you, I've honestly got no idea. I'm fed up with it and you might not know this, but I'm actually a photographer by day and a computer science student by night. That means I'm kind of like Batman, except I don't go outside and mostly sit at my desk. But I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and build a bunch of tools for photographers that are completely free. First up, we have the panorama splitter. Instagram is great. I love Instagram. I just have one small problem with it. It's destroying my entire dopamine balance and sucking me into the void at every chance it gets and I've just helplessly been going along with it for my entire teenage and adult life and no matter how hard I try, I'm never gonna get rid of it. But I mean, a much bigger problem is how am I gonna post this super wide panorama photo on Instagram? It's all vertical over there. The best solution is to make these cool carousel posts where the image is cut into multiple smaller vertical images. You can do this by calculating how many slices are needed for your original image, then opening up Photoshop and creating the slices and individually exporting them, blah, blah, blah. I did that exactly once and then realized that's way too much work for something so simple. Opening up Photoshop for that feels like using an excavator to plant a single flower. That's why I built the Pano Splitter web app. You just drag and drop any horizontal image and it will automatically figure out how many slices in Instagram's standard 4x5 aspect ratio are needed. It also lets you decide if you want to use Instagram's standard 1080x1350 resolution or just maximize the resolution based on the original image, which gives you much better quality after you uploaded the images to Instagram. Then you can hit generate slices, which then chops your original image into a bunch of little ones. It creates one slice with the entire image on a white background, so you can also post the full thing together with the slices. After I built this, I also just started using it a ton to put horizontal images on a white background because it's much faster than opening up Photoshop for this. It's free, go try it out at pano.futc.de. There might be some issues with certain aspect ratios, but I don't have the time right now to fix it, to be honest. So if if you're a programmer and want to fix any bugs in any of these tools or add more features, I've made all of them open source on my GitHub. Link down in the description. Literally years ago, I'm talking like 2017 probably, I had an idea that I put into my to-do app. All it said was AI generated Lightroom presets. And that task was in my to-do app for so long and every time I opened the app, I just saw it sitting there. And now I finally built it. Lightroom presets are actually just an XML text file. If you take one of these files and open it up, you can see that all of the values from every single slider in the Lightroom interface is just a number value in this file. So what if we just use an AI model to take a certain input and then find matching number values? After that, we just create a file in the proper format which we can then import into Lightroom. So I spent a few days turning this idea into a web app and here you can just type a prompt for your preset. This can be anything at all. For example, let's try Kodak Gold. Then hit generate and look at the spinny circle for a bit. NASCAR fans be like, yo, this is lit. And then it just downloads the preset file. Now in Lightroom, you can just import that file by going to file, import, develop profiles and presets and select the file you just downloaded. It will then end up in your user presets folder in the preset tab and you can apply it to your photo. In the web app you can select which large language model is used and it actually took me longer to get this stupid little captcha working than it did to build the entire rest of the app. The thing is every single preset that is generated is actually costing me money and I don't want somebody spamming this web page so I needed a captcha which tries to verify that you're not a bot but actually a human. Google for example does this verification by having you click on a bunch of little pictures but they also collect all of your information while doing that and yeah, I'm not a big fan of that because I actually used to be the actor for the privacy conscious Teletubby. So I tried to do something cool. This is a proof of work captcha. All it does is give your computer a math problem that it needs to solve. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. This doesn't verify that you're actually a human, but what it does is make the spammers computers run really hot if they try to send too many requests, which then doesn't make it worth it for them and that in turn makes me very 
very happy. <laughs> As always in programming, you spend eight hours trying to build something and then you go on the internet and realize that somebody has already built it just like 10 times better and then you use that. Okay, I got way off topic here. Just go to presetgenerator.futc.de. It's not perfect and honestly, a lot of the presets it generates are kind of sh but it's really fun to experiment with. I just built this thing out of pure curiosity because I always wanted to have something like this and then I passed it off as a university project last semester, which definitely was a 900 IQ move. Honestly, every one of these projects could have been their own entire video, but I'd rather give you the most value I can in a single video, like a human slowly feeding food to a wild animal so I can then trick you into subscribing to my channel. But I'm not gonna do that yet because otherwise I might scare you away. Just kidding, subscribe. As photographers, we all spend more time editing photos than we do with our loved ones. And instead of trying to fix that problem, I just made another web app that lets you show off your edit on Instagram or threads or whatever you're semi-voluntarily addicted to right now. You just upload the unedited picture and the certified underscore banger underscore final underscore final underscore v16 underscore edit dot jpeg. And this makes a little animation video for a post or story where it shows the before and after of your edit. I vibe coded this this thing in like two hours and it doesn't really work on mobile, so I would recommend that you use it on a proper computer. You might say, aren't you a computer science student? You shouldn't be building stuff just with AI. What about your scientific integrity? Well, when I have the choice between telling my silly idea to the funny word machine and then it automatically makes that idea happen, instead of me spending a whole week manually building and debugging an app while constantly having the thought in the back of my mind that I started making this to save me time. Time. Yeah, the choice is pretty simple. <laughs> so just go to beforeandafter.futc.de and give it a try. But again, I think it's broken on mobile and I'm honestly not sure when I will get around to fixing it. But you know what you should really get around to? That old camera gear collecting dust on your shelf. It's just losing value sitting there. So why not send it to MPB, my favorite place to buy and sell used photography gear. Selling gear on a used marketplace has gotten so annoying. People text you, yo, can I pick it up tonight? You say, yeah, sure. They say, what's the address? You give them your address and then they just ghost you and never show up. What's going on there? What the f*** are you gonna do with my address? And I'm not making that up for this ad read. Like, that actually happened to me multiple times. That's why years ago, way before they became a sponsor of the channel, I just switched to MPB and started using them for all of my restless camera kid syndrome needs. Because they have fair prices, they give you a warranty on all the used gear you buy, even on really old stuff, which is baffling to me, but really awesome. And selling or trading in your old gear couldn't be easier. You can get a quote on their website right now at the first link in the description. Okay, this one is just a classic case of why spend three minutes in Photoshop doing something manually when you can also spend one entire year trying to automate it. The idea is pretty simple. There is this one look in analog photography where you have these red glowy spots around bright light sources in the image called halations. Basically, what happens is that the photons hit the sheet of film, then fly through it, hit the back of the camera, and then ricochet back into the red layer on the back of the film, thus creating this super cool red glow that has been haunting my dreams for the past year. The problem is replicating this effect and tuning it manually in Photoshop for every single image just takes forever and Lightroom or Capture One don't offer this as a built-in effect. That's why I decided to, yet again, put way too much time into building it myself. I started off with just a very simple web prototype, then made it prettier and tried to make it perform better, which was a lot of work and I had a bunch of problems on the way there because I had no idea what I was doing. I had never worked with image processing before and in the end it took me like two weeks of work, but it turned out pretty cool. But that wasn't enough yet, so I started a company called Polychrome with the goal of building mobile apps and our first app was going to be Halation E5 for iOS. I thought, yeah, this is simple. We can just turn my old web app into an iOS app to get into the groove of things and figure out how this whole iOS app thing works. Maybe it'll take us like, I don't know, two to three months, no biggie. In the end, it took us seven months of on and off work, which included over two months of just trying to get accepted into the app store. But sometimes that's just what it takes to build an actually good and polished product, not just a proof of concept or prototype. I don't think I'm ever making my money back on this app, but I'm staying true to my word and didn't make it a subscription. You can try it for completely free and then it's just a one-time purchase of like eight bucks and that's it, you own it forever. If you enjoyed any of the tools I mentioned in this video, it would mean 
the world to me if you checked out one of my Lightroom preset packs. I actually just launched my Analog Summer pack, which you can also download for free. And the full pack is just a few bucks, and in my opinion, the looks turned out super cool. If you want to learn more about the process behind building the Helation Nephi web app, I made a whole video about it here, and I made a video about how we created the iOS app, which you can check out here. Both of those videos are at least twice as good as this one was. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.